Hi, if you are using Shopify and Clevio and that your website is translated, at least translated enough so now you are thinking of translating your email flows, then watch this video because there is one mistake you are probably about to make or a problem you are about to face that I'm going to solve very quickly, very easily uh, in this video. I will show you that in five minutes. What's the problem? Simple. When a customer chooses another language uh, to navigate your website and place an order, how do you know what language was the customer using? At least, how do Clavio knows that? Shopify knows it, Clavio does not know it. Why? That's a good question, but here's what Clavio says. Um, Basically, I uh, make it short for you. There are two ways to uh, to find out the language of someone on the website. The first one is um, segments by the estimated location provided by the IP, which means it tells where the customer um, placed the order, which is not always the good uh, language. Maybe someone uh, I'm going to walk you through an example, maybe that is uh, uh, the person is uh, English speaking, uh, lives in Germany, place an order in English. Well, in this case, Clavio would think that the person is German. So you will now uh, send German email to this person, which has navigated the website in English. So that's the first one. We don't want it. The second one is to ask the person but that is only available when it is for an opt-in form. If someone uh, put their email in order to receive any, anything, um, you can ask them uh, if they're, what language they are speaking, but that's not what we want. We want to make sure that every single flow that uh, is sent to a customer is in the right language. So we basically have three entry points from someone uh, navigating the website uh, to the moment that they receive email. The first one is the opt-in form. This one is solved by Clavio. You can use other methods. It doesn't matter. You can ask the customer for the language. Fine. The second one is um, when someone uh, abandon a cart, um, starts a checkout and, and leave the website. If the person left uh, their email, then we want to send them emails in the right language. And the third one is um, when someone uh, place an order. Obviously, we want all the emails that are following the order to be in the right language. So let's have a look at how do we do that. Um, the first thing I already talked about um, this example, but imagine the website is in German. Uh, it is translated in several languages. Uh, now a customer, the one I was talking about, uh, is English speaking, but living, lives in Germany. So you can find it uh, if you have some customers like that in your customer base. You type the filter, con customer countries contain DE and customer language is the language you want to check. And you can see if you have some customers that are like that. So basically this person would have chosen a certain language and a certain country to receive the order. What happens here is that if you have a properly translated website, um, maybe you used Shopify um, translate and adapt app and you have a team um, that is translated and everything is fine for, from your translation, then the order confirmation will be in the right language, in the language that uh, the customer used to place the order. That is native from Shopify. They know it, they use the information internally, they send the right notification to the customer. Fine, no problem. But as most brand, and if you don't, you should send um, post-purchase emails to reassure the customer, to ask reviews, whatever. You have a lot of emails to send to the customer after an order is placed, um, maybe even months after to ask them to come back and order again. And in this case, if you don't get the language from the customer and put it into Clavio, then you will never know what language this person was using. So in our case, if you don't do anything um, for this, for Clavio, the person is German. 
not English. Okay, how does that look? Basically, you need uh, make.com. That's the, the, the tool we are going to use. It's an automation tool. Uh, maybe you know it, maybe you don't. If you don't, you maybe you have someone that is taking care of the technical part in your website. You can ask this person to check it out uh, or you can um, YouTube it. You will find plenty of videos to use it. And the thing I'm going to show you right now, you can basically create an account and, and do it in a few minutes. There is no complicated uh, thing to do. Okay, here I have two scenarios. Scenario is an automation. There are two different scenarios. One is going to take care of the abandoned checkout, right? Someone starts checkout, leaves, then we get the, the information about the language. Then I have another one for when someone places an order. They are quite similar, a little bit um, slightly different, you will see. Okay, let's put myself a little bit smaller here and have a look at it. How does that look? The trigger of the scenario, which is the thing that is going to trigger the scenario, that starts the scenario, uh, is actually um, um, not a countdown, but a timer. Every three hours, the scenario will check if there was uh, abandoned checkout in the last three hours. For every abandoned checkout that it found, it will run the scenario one by one, right? So to do that, it's simple. You, I will just create it here. It's Shopify and then you go, uh, I think it's abandoned. Yep. You look for the one that has the acid here and you, you should put the limit at 100. Hopefully <laughs> you don't pass the limit. Good, good for you if you pass this limit. Um, create a connection here. Uh, so you make can talk with Shopify and just click OK. Then click a new scenario and look for Clavio. And in Clavio, you are going to look for, look for list profile. This is this one. This asks Clavio to look into every profile that was created or that is already existing to find one specific profile. That's the only way, unfortunately, we have to um, to find a profile. It's not that uh, simple, but basically you just have to copy that. Uh, and instead instead of the, tr the two quotes, you will just go ahead and grab the email here. It means that this is the query that it will be sent to Clavio um, to retrieve this profile that was created at the moment uh, that Shopify uh, registered an abandoned checkout. I hope you're following here. Okay, uh, you can limit it to one since you only want, want one person. Let me delete that. Okay, so now we have retrieved every abandoned checkout and for each of them, we are first going to list the profile just to find out the information about the certain profile from the email. Now that we have the, the profile, we have the profile ID. So we can use the module update a person based on the profile ID and you will go all the way down and here we are going to add a custom property. What is a custom property? I'm going to show you how you can create one right now. Okay, so here I am in Clavio. Uh, this is my profile from the website, um, the Shopify website. I just uh, created a profile a while ago for test purposes. Um, if you go down, here you can say no actually it's right here you have custom properties and we have a bunch uh, but this one is the one i created so you won't have it if you check uh, on your website on your clavio account but then you just have to add a custom property name it the way you want but just remember how you name it and give a value first just to create it uh, you can just write en for example uh, for english um, by creating one dummy property, it will create the custom property empty for every single uh, profile in your Clavio account. So then you can work with this property later on. So you can go ahead and do that. So you should have a new line here with the, the thing that you entered. And now if you didn't uh, 
No, you don't even have to refresh. Actually, you can just go back here and write the property that you found. And here we are going to use a formula, uh, which is actually quite simple. Uh, it is because the way that the, maybe I can find it here, you can see, yeah. See, that is the information we want to retrieve, customer local, it's called. And in this test, I was using the French language. Yeah, if you didn't realize I'm French, uh, as well as the, um, the DE uh, website. Uh, I'm telling Shopify, I, I'm in Germany. Uh, I want the Germany's price, basically the market. And because we have those two uh, different things that for Clavio they are just text, we know that we only want the first one. The first one is the language. So this is why we are using a formula here to on, to cut th this um, this piece of data after the second character. Uh, to do that, you just go here and you find substring. Substring return a portion of text string between the start position and the end position. You write, I will do it again for you here, substring, then I go into the first spot and I'm going to look for my string, which we said is local, customer local here. I put it here, all right. And now I'm going to write zero because zero is the very first character and I want two characters in my string. So I'm going to put two after the semicolon. I don't even know how to call that. Okay, cool. Now, okay, save. Uh, regarding the time, uh, every, uh, how long does it take every, uh, every time it runs? You just have to decide uh, basically when you are sending um, an email after someone's leaves the, the checkout you always have a certain delay generally it's four hours so if you run if you run the um, scenario every three hours then normally you should be fine uh, every time someone will receive this kind of email Clavio will already have um, registered the language of the person so you should be fine that's why i'm using three hours okay cool now we have seen the um, how does that work for abandon checkout, but the most frequent now is um, when someone's placed an order without abandoning the checkout. In this case, it is a little bit different because there is no um, time delay. Uh, it's, uh, it's triggered by a webhook and Shopify has um, an automatic webhook uh, module uh, that you can find in Make to create it, again, I'm going to show you next to this one. You just add a Shopify module and you go all the way down to new event. Here you click add and you follow the process. There is a filter where you can choose order create. This means once you have set it up, accepted all the authorization and you run the scenario, every new order make will receive the information about this specific order. Okay. Then I just sleep for five seconds. Why? It is because it might take a little while when someone's order to claim you to get the information with the profile. If someone, if the customer wasn't in Clavio before, um, it is always safe to have a little bit of time in the middle. Maybe 10 would be fine. I'm going to try that out, but five, five should work. Okay, I received information from the new order. Wait five seconds, then same thing. List the profile. Here I get the email here. Oh, I have a problem with my blurry app. And then update a person. Update the language exactly the same. All good. There you have it. We have the two main entry points that are sending the information from Shopify to Clavio. Now, what do you have to work with? And that is another um, 
topic is how do you use that in Klaviyo. I'm not going to show you here. Uh, if it fits something you are interested in, please let me know and I can show you exactly uh, how to set up different flows depending on the, um, the language of customers. But basically with this information, you can create whatever you want. You can duplicate flows, translate them, and then uh, create a filter that they are only sent to um, French people or, or English people and, and so on. That is the only information that you need. I hope it was uh, clear and not confused. Uh, if you are watching, if you are still watching this video, which is not for everybody, I guess that you uh, are in the translation process or maybe you have translated your website, um, your Shopify website. If you are interested in um, looking at how can you translate using Shopify Adapt and Translate and OpenAI, I have made a full video about it. I've created um, some kind of workflow where I export the data and run in through, uh, through ChatGPT uh, with certain um, prompts that keep the website, um, the translation native that uses a certain language that I can define and that also keep the thing optimized for SEO, for example. It's, it's a little bit high, um, um, uh, higher level but yeah, it is. Uh, if it is something you're interested in, then please uh, watch this video and I see you just there. Bye bye.